Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Mrs Homemaker UK. So today we're going to be making this cotton reusable face mask. And as you see, it comes with a filter option here where you can add tissue to make it more protective. And it also has a wire adjuster so you can adjust it to fit the shape of your nose. And it has pleats so you can have full coverage and more protection. We really need these masks at the moment because we need as much protection as possible. Get sewing these for the vulnerable, your friends and family. And yeah, let's get sewing. I'm using this cotton fabric and this thin elastic. I'm using this thin elastic because it was the only one I had in my sewing box at home. But this elastic works just as well as the thicker elastic used on the medical masks. You will also need some wire like this one. I got this from some food packaging in my kitchen. Start by cutting your fabric. The measurements need to be 38 centimeters across, that's wide, by 19 centimeters high from top to bottom. Now on both the left side of the fabric and on the right side of the fabric, Sew a zigzag stitch. The purpose of this zigzag stitch is to stop the sides of the fabric from fraying and to prevent any issues later on. If you have an overlocking machine, you can also use that. But your home sewing machine and this zigzag stitch works just as well. Here you need to fold the right side of the fabric on top of the left side of the fabric so that it is now in half with the right sides of the fabric facing each other on the inside and line up the edges nice and neatly. Now do the same measurement from the bottom edge measuring four centimeters up. We are now going to sew along this line. We are going to sew to the marked four centimeter points where the pins are on the bottom area here and on the top area here using a normal straight stitch like this one. In terms of the seam allowance, I'm just using the edge of my sewing machine foot and lining up against the edge of my fabric and using that as the mark for the sewn line. So the seam allowance is around one centimeter. As you can see, the two stitch lines there and there. Now turn the fabric so that the stitch line seam is facing up and flatten it out. Now iron here along this seam, pressing it open and flat. Take the opportunity now to press the whole fabric flat as this will create a nicer finish. Now turn the fabric inside out while with the right side of the fabric facing out now. Neaten it all out and flatten it again like so as you see I'm doing and with this edge that we had previously been sewing still on the outside here on the left hand side and now we're going to top stitch all along where I'm pointing, all along this edge. Make sure to flatten the fabric like so, so that when we sew along here, it will be nice and neat. I'm doing the top stitch with my sewing machine as my guide, but you can do the top stitch with a 0 0.5 to 1 centimeter top stitch away from the edge like so. Now 
Now measure 1.3 centimeters away from this edge, the inside edge. As you see, 1.3 from here to the inside and just pop a pin there so you know that's 1.3 centimeters away from that edge. Now turn the fabric so that it's 1.3 centimeters away from the opening edge just on the left hand side of the fabric and the rest of the fabric has been folded under like so and just flatten everything out. Iron press all of the fabric like so. Now we are going to sew all along all edges like so, the edges where I'm pointing, all of them. Pop some pins in place as we will be sewing all the way around. Do not worry too much about the seam allowance amount you use. I'm using the sewing machine foot again as my guide but you can use perhaps a one centimeter or a 0 0.5 centimeter or even a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance now when you come to the line where it has been folded you don't have to use such a huge seam allowance as you see here i'm just using around a 0 0.5 seam allowance so 0 0.5 centimeters away from the edge I'm sewing because it's already been folded it's not a raw edge and um, there's no raw like loose threads on the side so I'm just literally going around now on this edge the edge near where the opening is to place the filter in the mask I'm sewing just under 0 0.5 centimeters away from the edge Now these are all the four lines I have sewn around the edges. As you will see, I have made two of them very close to the edge, this one here. It is just under 0 0.5 centimeters away from the edge as you can see. And I made it like this because I knew it was going to be on the edge where it's the top of the mask closest to the eye, so I didn't want it to be too far away from the edge I wanted it to almost look like a top stitch and the other edges as you see here are quite wide around 1.5 centimeters the next step is to add this wire inside of the opening at the top this will be where you can adjust the top of the mask to fit your nose shape as you will see, the wire I am using here is around 12 centimeters long. Now just make sure that the wire is still and in place under the opening there. I've just popped some pins underneath the wire like so to keep it in place so it won't move around so much. It's better to use a longer wire that will go from like the top here all the way down to the bottom. This will be better for shaping around the nose, giving more structure and it won't move around so much as it will be along all along here. I'm using this stitch here that was previously sewn for the top stitch on the opening edge. I'm using that as my guide and I'm sewing over that line as you can see. This is how it looks after being sewn. The next step is to add some pleats to the mask. You can make the pleats however wide you prefer. I am making three pleats here. I haven't measured them, I've just used what I think looks best and most suited to this type of mask.
Forming the pleats may take you a few attempts. That's normal because the pleats is one of the more challenging steps. Now we are going to machine sew down this edge here and here. But first we're going to iron everything down, getting it ready nice and neat, as you can see like so. So after ironing, as just mentioned, we need to sew along here. Sew along this line, the line that's already there and use that as a guide. And then sew along the other edge line here. As you can see, I'm sewing over the line that was already there on the edge, using that as obviously my guide just to sew on top of it or next to it. Either way works. The sewn lines are kind of hard to see, but they're just over the lines that were there before. As you can see, just over or next to it. And this is how the pleat effect looks. You can see it's looking more like a mask now. Now we need to add two strips to each edge of the face mask, like so. Placing the fabric with the right sides facing each other, like so. And making sure that the strips come over the edge equal amount, so as you can see a couple of centimetres away from the mask edge. The strips need to measure around 13 centimetres long by 6 centimetres wide. Now machine sew the strip to the face mask like so. I am using the sewn line as a guide and I will sew just next to it or you can sew on top of it. I'm sewing on top of it here, but slightly next to it on the inside will also work. The next step is to fold these loose edges under, like so. Further pin these edges down to stop them bouncing back. You can also tack them down if you know how to tack sew. So this is probably better because the pins still get in the way a little bit when it comes to using them on the sewing machine. By using the stitch line that's already there, this line, just sew so over that line again, continuing the line, basically just sewing that line again so that it catches those loose edges. As you can see I'm using the pre-existing line that was already there and I've caught them in with that line and it's just one continuous line, everything's all sewn down now. Now turn the edges like I'm doing, so turning it all out and flatten it all because we're now going to roll everything under and inwards. It may take you a few attempts when rolling the edges inwards because you want it to be as neat as possible. So you see here I've rolled everything in. I've rolled it maybe three times, so over and then over itself again and again and I will pop some pins in place or you can tack it down in place again I recommend to tack it it just makes it a lot more accurate when it comes to using the sewing machine the next step will be to machine sew these edges down 
So we're going to sew along the edges here that we've just folded in. You can sew either on this side or the underside on those edges, whichever is easiest for you. And we want to sew it ideally, if it's possible and easy for you, to sew in this tiny gap there. That will create the neatest finish and it will be more invisible. So yeah, along here. But if that's not possible, just sew along the edging to keep it down. Because as you see, I'm sewing in that tiny, tiny gap. But as long as it's sewn down, that's fine. Now the last step is to attach the elastics to either side of the face mask. When cutting the elastics, make them around 20 centimeters to 25 centimeters. I cut my elastic a little bit smaller. That's just because my elastic is very, very stretchy. So now, thread the elastic through the safety pin by poking the safety pin through the elastic and closing it. Now at the bottom opening here, just push the safety pin through. If you have a darning needle or like a kid's plastic sewing needle, it would be much easier to use this, but I've used a safety pin because I know most people have a safety pin in their craft box or somewhere at home. Anyway, just push it through. This will take a while. Be patient and um, if any little threads poke out, that's okay. Just trim them and push anything back inside where we have folded it over. Trim off any little bits of thread that popped out when we were pushing the safety pin through. And then finally, tie a knot in the elastic with both ends together like so. Make sure the knot is very tight and that it won't come undone. And once you've managed to do the knot, then just move the elastic around so that the knot will be inside and it won't be seen. And there you have it, your finished face mask in your own unique pretty fabric. And you can wash it, you can reuse it, you can add a filter to it. I really hope this step-by-step -step video has been very helpful and you have been able to make a face mask easily. If you do have any questions, then please do leave me a comment in the comment box below this video. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, Mrs. Homemaker UK, for more content like this. And if you're feeling charitable, why not send a face mask to somebody you know who needs one, just like I've done. Anyway, take care. I hope you're all very well and remain in the best of health and see you next time.